Okay, hi, I'm Al Schneider, and I'm one of the uh, co-creators of the new Digital Bolex D16 camera. Close to the very beginning, uh, Joe knew that he wanted to get Bolex involved, and he's a very persuasive person, and, you know, his brand, obviously, they're known for very, very high-quality, long-lasting products, and that's something that, you know, they wanted to make sure we would be able to provide we, we speak with them regularly. Um, we, uh, I, the head of the company uh, is someone who has been, you know, a friend of ours and a friend of this project for a long time. And so, you know, everything that we do in this project, we get vetted by Bolex. And Joe's already said that, you know, the, the number one finished camera is going to be hand delivered to the Bolex factory in Switzerland. An original Bolex, you know, an original Ari would I used um, at USC, you know, those are from World War II. They still function exactly as they were intended because when you sold goods back then, they were designed to do what they were supposed to do forever. Um, and we really wanted that mentality of nostalgia to be present in our camera. Well, I mean, this prototyping process has been going on for a long time. Uh, we got the first working prototype, I think in November. And so this is, again, it's ongoing. You know, we, a, a lot of people have again, misinterpreted that we're just now that we've done the Kickstarter starting to do the prototyping. When in reality, we're already um, going into our third stage of prototyping. And the Kickstarter money is not for any kind of R&D so much as it is to actually produce on a mass scale the amount of cameras needed to fulfill the Kickstarter campaign. We have our tech guys in Canada that are already now working on the next step, which is the in-body prototype, um, which will be hopefully very, very similar to the final camera that will come out in August. Um, we hope that will be ready in a month or so. We've A lot of people have asked us about NAB and we hope to go. Um, one of the things that we would like to show there if we go is the newer prototype, but it just may not be ready in time. We love the Iconoscope guys. We love them. We don't want to tread on their territory and it makes me very sad when people tweet at me like Iconoscope killer because that's not what we're about. What we're about at the end of the day is using non-proprietary uh, hardware. The problem that most of these other people have had is that they're trying to create a camera that uses all in-house technology, which requires a lot more money spent on R&D. It requires um, y you know, people who want to use that camera to buy all their stuff and there's really no reason it has to be that way because like the technology exists that you can put together in a box and create a camera from essentially off-the-shelf parts um, and it can be much much cheaper than a scarlet and that's what we wanted to do and red i think particularly you know they have great cameras don't get me wrong but from what I recall on Philip's blog, you know, by the time you can shoot a full day on a Scarlet, you've spent at least $20,000 between the body and all, you know, the batteries and everything you need to actually shoot one full day, $20,000. Well, that doesn't seem particularly uh, low budget or indie, you know, there's, there are people that, yeah, make $20,000 in a year and you can't, you can't say just because it is cheaper than an Alexa, this is for independent filmmakers. It doesn't really work that way. In order for independent filmmakers to be able to use it, in order for amateurs or for kids to be able to get a hold of this thing and play with it, you really have to level the playing field um, and make this type of technology affordable for everybody. I don't want to release something half-baked um, that people will be frustrated with because when you're putting, you know, financial investment into a camera, you expect to be able to use it. I mean, how do you feel, like, just in all honesty, your cameras will deliver by the end of summer? I think so, yeah. Okay. I mean, from, from where we, we had the basic hardware in place in November, and, you know, that has been uh, worked on continuously. And if we have the in-body prototype in the next like four to six weeks, making that leap 
um, from that to the finished camera should not be huge. Um, one thing that is cool that could potentially delay us is that Joe has been very active in speaking with people who have bought the camera already and getting all of their feedback on say, you know, which side the audio ports should be on and stuff like that. If, if there for some reason were a major change, uh, that were to be made in the hardware, then that could create a little bit of a delay. But again, that would be coming from the community of people that have purchased this thing. And I think that having their voices be a part of that is also really important to us. Mm -hmm.